Hello and welcome to the COP30 sessions live from High House here in Belém, Brazil. Over the last 50 years, the amount of wildlife on our planet has fallen by nearly 75%, according to the WWF, and there were now thought to be 1 million species at risk of extinction. Can that trend be reversed? And is there a future where recovery is possible? I'm joined by Marco Lambertini, convener of the Nature Positive Initiative and former Director General of WWF International. Marco, welcome to the studio. My pleasure, thank you for having me. Now, is there a biodiversity crisis? There is a massive biodiversity crisis. Uh, and, but you know, the, 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 the new dimension of our time is that we know it. This is really the new dimension. We do know what's going on. We've never been more aware of the crisis, uh, of the impacts that we are having on nature, but I would say most importantly, of the consequences that this crisis is having, not just on nature as something external to us, but actually on us. And that's something super recent. And I believe that this is the, the main mindset shift uh, that actually we need, to, we need to see happening at the global level. Stop taking, taking nature for granted. We've been taking nature for granted for too long because nature has been there, rich, plentiful, productive, providing all we needed, and still continues to do that. The nature is not just something nice to watch. Nature is providing services which are existential to our well-being, our health, I would say also our happiness. When you talk about health, it's about physical, but also mental health. And it is something that provides services like regulation of water, access to clean water, um, food, that are fundamental to our economy too. So from a moral and ethical uh, imperative, which I personally feel very strongly about, now nature has entered a space of, if we lose nature, we are at risk. And so in the book um, that we wrote recently, Becoming Nature Positive, we call this moment, the moment of the great threat, because nature decline is so steep, so severe, that an entire ecosystem like the Amazon, entire Earth system are beginning to destabilize. But at the same time, we are at the point where we are facing the massive opportunity, the unique unprecedented opportunity to avoid steeping points in natural systems and embrace a turning point in the way we relate to nature. You're, of course, one of the originators of uh, Nature Positive. Um, could you just further break down what Nature Positive is and, and why it matters? So Nature Positive, in simple words, uh, is, is, a, is, a, is an ambition, uh, but also a measurable goal. It's the ambition to build a future with more nature, not less, compared to today, basically reversing the trend of the last many centuries, but particularly the last 70, 80 years. This is where really the great acceleration of humanity has exponentially increased impacts on the natural world. Imagine that when I was born, we were two and a half billion people in the world. Now we are eight. So the population has tripled in my lifetime. And with the population, the impact and the overconsumption, particularly in the rich economies. So um, we're reaching a point where we need to hold the loss of nature. We also need to reverse and restore. And nature, contrary to climate, has an amazing intrinsic regenerative ability. We've seen locally examples of forests, uh, fish stocks, species, wetlands, marine habitats coming back when, as soon as we give it a chance. And so it's possible. And I would say more than possible is actually necessary because as we know, um, we can't afford runaway climate change. We can't afford the collapse of ecosystems like forests, the ocean, that are so fundamental to our lives. And unfortunately, we lost that understanding of the connectivity, of the dependencies. We now buy food in supermarkets. We have no idea where the food is coming from. We use water from our tap, but water comes from nature. It doesn't come from our tap. And so we got to reacquire that awareness of our dependency on nature. And only then 
we will treasure nature, value nature, for all that provides to us, which is now almost invisible, particularly from an economic perspective. Nature is economically valuable only when it's dead. A tree is acquiring economic value when it's cut down and sold as timber. A fish when it's fished, killed and served as food. Not when they contribute part of the forest or the ocean to maintain the balance of the planet, which makes this planet a living planet that allows us to live in it. Now we've touched on uh, one of the aims, but to put a time scale on it, it's to halt and reverse catastrophic loss of nature by 2030, which is only five years away. Um, how confident are you that it can be done in that time scale? Look, it is like what, so this is what science is asking us to do. Uh, science is telling us that, for example, the Amazon, uh, if we lose another uh, 10% uh, in terms of deforestation of the Amazon, the Amazon will begin to generate not enough water to keep itself as a rainforest. And so, you know, this is going to be, I mean, the consequences of that are, are, are difficult even to imagine. Can we actually do it by 2030? I don't know. It depends on how, how committed, how fast, and how, 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 how able are we to scale. We've seen already a, 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 a slowing down uh, of certain uh, losses. For example, the Amazon, deforestation has de uh, um, slow down a lot. So we can do it. Uh, your question is difficult uh, because I, I actually don't know if we can get to a nature positive future, but that's not the point. It's like 1.5. Can we get to 1.5 future? The point is we need to try uh, all we can, as fast as we can, as scale as we can now, because even if we don't get to these ambitious targets by 2030 or 2050, if we don't invest in our energy and commitment, we know that the result will be catastrophic. And so we've got to do our best and try to, to get as close as possible to a nature positive and a carbon neutral outcome. Now, I think that um, leads us on to the nature measurement protocol. It's one of the things you're talking about here at COP. Can you just give us a little explanation of what it is? And again, why, why is it important? Right. So as I said, the first thing that needs to happen is a mindset shift, is a cultural change in the way we look at nature and we look at ourselves in nature and we acknowledge the dependencies from nature. This is what we need to reacquire and acknowledge. That's really the most important thing. But then once we have uh, uh, understood that we need to embrace a nature positive and the carbon neutral direction, uh, the question is, how do we get there? And right now on climate, it is a very clear agenda, very clear target, very clear pathway in its emissions, and a very clear way to measure progress and build accountability towards the target. The climate community has identified the metrics, CO2 equivalent, the equivalent of, of CO2 tons, uh, for greenhouse gases, and that has led a massive, massive mobilization of the private sector and governments in that direction. I mean, before Paris, we were heading towards 3.6, 3.8 degrees of global warming, basically a dead planet. Now we are still far above the Paris uh, target, but we are towards 2.5, 2.6. So we are getting there, and that because we have provided society, government, companies, with the tools, with the goal and the tools to drive action and contribute to that goal. On nature, everybody loves nature. Everybody in intuitively understands nature is, is important. But we don't have the tools, we don't have the clarity. Now we have the global goal, nature positive, but the next step is to provide, particularly to the private sector, which is the source of the, the majority of the impacts on nature, um, the metrics, the guidance to measure their contribution to Nature Positive in order to be accountable, to be held accountable, but also to be recognized for what they do and, and, and drive action and drive the results that we need to see. Now we're here, we are in the heart of the Amazon. Um, I think obviously Brazil wanted to shift some focus on the topics that we're discussing. Has that worked? <laughs> so, I mean, look, Brazil is no exception to the rest uh, uh, of the world. We are locked in right now into a nature negative economy, climate negative economy. And let me open a bracket here because we all, you know, it's too easy to point the finger at how bad has been the economy until now. 
But let's face it, there was a beautiful title of an article recently. There's never been a better time for humans. If you look at the human development uh, stats of uh, just 100 years ago, at the start of the 20th century, you know, two-thirds of the population globally was in extreme poverty. Malnutrition was, uh, uh, again, two-thirds uh, of the population. Child, uh, and sorry, um, uh, uh, life expectancy was below 50, degree, 50 years. 40% uh, of the newborn wouldn't reach, uh, wouldn't pass childhood. And now those figures are completely different. Now we have 10% of the population in extreme poverty instead of two-thirds. We have 80 years almost as life expectancy on average. And so, you know, we have improved a lot. So the nature of negative economy, over-exploitative, has helped humanity to skyrocket on so many different ways. There's still much inequality, but on average, everybody almost in every region of the world is better off now than it was 100 years ago. Point is that that model that has given us so much technological progress and all the rest has now reached its limit. We're going too far. And by going too far, we're undermining the foundation of our future development, nature. And so um, that's where we really have, are confronted with. And Brazil, like any other economy, is trying to find ways to move from a nature negative to a nature positive. And there's so many things need to change. The way we invest public money in subsidies. Today, we're investing $2.5, $2.7 trillion every year, every year in nature negative subsidies. You know what the military spending last year was? $2.3 trillion, the global military spending. So we are spending more money against nature than actually fighting <laughs> within ourselves. It's like nature is our worst enemy. And, and, uh, and so massive systemic change needs to happen in order to move to a nature positive society and economy. Um, but we're beginning to do that. And probably the, the clearest example is the electrification and renewable energy revolution. Because in the last 20 years, we've seen you know, renewable energy becoming cheaper than fossil fuel. We've seen investment in renewable energy double in fossil fuel. And now we are seeing countries like China peaking fossil fuel emissions because they are inputting in their grid so much renewable. So, you know, it, it, transitions are not easy. They are, not, uh, uh, they are complex, plenty of uncertainties. But I think governments like Brazil are trying and moving in the right direction. And so many other governments. The question is, we need to accelerate because nature is shaking. The resilience of nature is challenged. We can't afford to achieve tipping points. There will be no return. And so, including climate, but also eco ecosystems. So we got to really speed up and accelerate and build a narrative which is positive about the future. A nature positive future, a carbon neutral future, a decarbonized future is a future, is a better future. It's a better future for each of us, not just for uh, in, in abstract terms. It's going to be better for each of us because it's going to be safer, it's going to continue to provide uh, humanity uh, uh, with what we need to continue to prosper, address inequality. The nature of negative economy has done, uh, has done its time, so we've got to move on. And that's what we really need to embrace as policymakers, as individuals in our own lifestyle, li li uh, lifestyles, and, and overall as, as a global economy. Marco, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And that's all we have time for today. This has been the COP30 sessions live from High House and thank you for watching.